Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for being here on a gorgeous Wednesday evening in Portland, Oregon. This is the first podcast we're going to do with the masks because we're going to be socially responsible. Hopefully, you guys are doing the same thing. We are at the Happy Rock Inn in Gladstone, Oregon. This is the destination spot for all musicians coming through town. Anybody that's interested in music is going to fall in love with this place. That beautiful backdrop. I want to thank my sponsors at Five Star Guitars for being with me from the beginning. Wonderful equipment. They're based in Beaverton, Oregon. They've got repairs. They've got lessons from pros like Jennifer Batten. If you're interested in buying guitars and you look anywhere else, the good thing about Oregon is that there's no sales tax, so you can stay, take that big, oh. yeah, take that big old stimulus check and go down and check out, buy some guitars, and you save a bunch of money, right? Oh. So can you fit a guitar in your back while you're driving? We can't fit a stick of gum in our bike right now. <laughs> Seriously. Oh, man. Hey, check this out. This is our first remote and such a special occasion at the Happy Rock Inn. I'm joined by two wonderful people on the road. This is Ricky Rockman and Leah Vendetta. Thank you for being here, guys. We look like bandits. I can't believe it. I'm looking at this. And the good thing is, because my beard turns gray and I usually dye it. But now it's like, why bother? So I look like Santa Claus under this thing right now. But it's just, it's just, it's it's weird. Like I'm looking in the monitors and I'm like, oh my God, we're wearing masks. Yeah, that's what we like look like bandits. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, what uh, what we want to do today is um, we're going to bring a little attention to something that Ricky and Leah are doing. They're coming across the country, riding motorcycles as a benefit for Alzheimer's through a foundation. So one of the first things we want to do is talk a little bit about what started this venture and why they stopped at the Happy Rock and what the uh, what the travels look like after this. How's that? Sounds good. Whatever you guys want to talk about, I'll talk about anything. All right. So how'd you get started on? Um, Ryan's Foundation. You want to talk a little bit about your connection? Sure. Um, the money that we raise goes to the Ryan's Bl Ryan Ryan Blaney Family Foundation. Ryan Blaney is a friend. He's also a great NASCAR driver, also metalhead, and Leah's tattooed him, and he's just a good dude. And he has the Ryan Blaney Family Foundation, which the money goes to Alzheimer's Association. His uh, his grandfather had Alzheimer's. Okay. My grandmother had Alzheimer's. My grandfather. Had Alzheimer's. And we're talking to people all the time that tell us experiences they've had with their families with Alzheimer's Association, with Alzheimer's. And um, of course, it's it's tough. It's, it's a form of dementia. And it happens when, when people age. And Leah knows even more stats than I do about the whole thing. It's the sixth leading cause of death in the US. Six, yeah. And it's not only that it's and, and it's not only that it just it's it's really a bummer for the people that have it but it's really tough for the people that are around the people that have it. You know, you see somebody that you love and you're like, Oh, good morning. And they have no clue who you yeah, are. Yeah, you know? for the caregivers as well, because like they do all this work and they, you know, their work is not appreciated. And so we're, stuff. so we're just having people donate at Ricky's ride.com, which is R I K I S R I D.com. And every penny goes straight to the Alzheimer's association. It doesn't go to our expenses. It doesn't go to gas. It doesn't go to, publicist which we don't have it just goes right to the association so every year that we ride we try to find a charity that we think would be a worthy charity so when we rose in 18 rode in 18 we decided it would be stop soldier suicide how many miles did we run in 2018 uh 14,556 oh, and we raised 32,000 dollars for stop soldier suicide and you got to understand our entire crew from the producers to this looks like we're starting on fire <laughs> metal but as far as producers, publicists, crew, helping us pick our route, it's us. There's not one person. There's nobody riding with us. There's no trailer. Any The reason sometimes it takes a long time to video, video is I'm trying to like, how do I edit a video? And try to send it to people. And also the people that follow us on social media because they tell us where to go. Yeah. People so. have been telling me where to go my whole life. <laughs> but now we have, the, like Leah said, we have people on social media telling us places to go. They say, oh, suggest, I'm going to let Leah tell the story because when we were in Pittsburgh, they oh told us to go someplace for a sandwich. What was the place called? Oh, uh, it was Primantes. Primanti Bros or something like it that. It was I something guess. that everybody said, if, oh, if you're in Pittsburgh, you got to get a sandwich at Primanti Bros. Okay. So, Leah, you can tell the story. <laughs> so, we walked to the restaurant and um, we... 
Walk well, to get up to the restaurant. Okay. To, walk to, the, to get to the restaurant. Of, instead of taking the regular like roadside where everybody goes, we go up this little hill and it's behind the restaurant and there's like the dumpster right there. And I go really fast and I get on the top and I hear some noise in the dumpster oh. and I'm looking and I see two people there. And then I hear like noise and I thought maybe like this girl was in distress or something. <laughs> and the next thing I know, I see this guy, but it was like a little, you know, you couldn't really see the dumpster was like, it was like this gate and stuff like, but next thing I know, I see this guy like walking with like his pants around his ankle oh. and like i hear the belt buckle like ling, 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 ling. i'm like oh my god I just sex in the dumpster people, like having sex in the dumpster and it gets better to... oh my god so so we walk up and lee's like <laughs> he's like i'm traumatized i just can't there's two people having sex by the dumpster <laughs> But then, a, then we go into the restaurant and guess who our waitress was? No! Yeah. yeah. I mean, look, we're, we're wearing masks. We're wearing masks and we're doing everything else. But I'm pretty sure this is not good. And I think the cook was the other guy or something. Oh, I don't no. know. I don't know. But, but, it was too, but too and then cool. the thing is, we, we would have just said, like, let, let's just get out of here. Like, this this place is gross. Yeah. I like, hey, there, hey there's there. nothing wrong with a little dumpster sex <laughs> once in a while. Yeah, but but no. not when you're the waitress and the no. cook at the restaurant. In the middle of a <laughs> A pandemic right, and you're supposed right. to be sanitary so that was kind of like eh. but because we're we listen to the, the followers on social media which is kind of stupid many times <laughs> but because we do we go okay everybody told us we got to eat at this place we got to eat a let's pond. go let's do it um, so we ordered the sandwich how was it leah it was like you're not that well, there's a dog throwing up in the background right now. <laughs> and that dog pretty much that was I'm kind of thinking that was t- <laughs> Twinkie Twinkie the bulldog or something <laughs> just puked pretty much I don't even have to tell you what the food was like. On cue. Because that was like as if we pushed the sound effect button. Yeah. That was the sound effect of what it did. I uh, <laughs> So you uh you get recommendations every city you go in. How mm-hmm. did you find out about Happy Rock? Uh they contacted us. Okay. And told us a little bit about, you know, hey, we got this place in Port Royal, Oregon. And everybody seemed really cool. And we're like, okay, you know, let's just try it. Because sometimes we're like a little bit wary. Yeah. But we just decided, you know, Happy Rock Inn or <laughs> Portland. We looked up, we read the reviews on, we, which I didn't tell you, is that we did read all the reviews on Yelp. And we read all the reviews on everything else. I wrote those. Did, did you? No, I didn't. <laughs> well, well we, read, we read the reviews and the reviews were good. Because some people just say, you know. Hey, why don't you come and stay at our house? And yeah. we're like, Ooh. But, um, but we came here and everybody has been so cool. This place is just, this place is awesome. And when you're riding a motorcycle every single day yeah. for like just about a month and you go someplace where it's just like good people hanging out, having a good time outside, you know, it's like, oh, this kind of doesn't feel like we're on a ride. It's a little break from being on the motorcycle. Mm-hmm. It's that that's definitely I think the Yeah, end. so if you're in Portland, go to the Happy Rock Inn. We uh, like this place. Uh, mm-hmm. And I think uh, they'll be first to tell you. Yeah. 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 I'll tell you. Woo. We've got uh we've, we've got some guests here. Uh, there were some uh, some fans of Ricky's that were supportive of the charity. So they uh, kicked down a little money to his GoFundMe campaign and in exchange they get to hang out with us here. So we might ask a few questions from them later whatever, on. Whatever, and, uh, whatever. If we, uh, if you've got questions out there as well, we've got uh, my five star guitar sponsor reading through your chat right now, so he may be feeding questions to us in a moment as well. So, um, sifting through offers over here. Oh, okay. good, <laughs> good. But it's really cool, you know, that the people here donated because it doesn't go towards our expenses or anything. It goes straight to the, um, it goes straight to the uh, the charity. Oh, it, this is going to be a surprise. Huh? It's going to be a surprise. That's right. Yeah. And and but but when you know when the Happy Rock in says, "Hey, we're going to hook you up and we're going to take care of you." That helps our ride big time. because yeah. you know we're paying for everything ourselves. That's amazing. And so did you save up money a big a lot ahead well, of time? Well, the truth is, we had sponsors, okay. and then this little pandemic broke out, and for some reason, certain sponsors didn't think it was a wise thing to be associated with two people riding their motorcycle uh-huh. all over America, even though we're wearing masks. We're right. practicing. And the message that we're giving people is like, look, we know there's some crap going on right now, but get outside. Yeah. You yeah. know, see this country. There's, there's good things. You can go out there and have a really good time camping or whatever yeah. and still practice social distancing. And that's pretty much what we're doing this whole trip. Yeah, right? and, you, and be responsible, you know, and you can still have a good time, just social distance and uh, wear a mask and yeah. yeah. 
you know what? I would imagine you develop friendships along the way. You know, this, my, my, the thing that I love about my show is that most of the people that I've talked to have been people I've toured with forever. And so this is an opportunity for me to kind of be connected with them as if we were backstage, right? Now, you guys have been together for a few years now, five years, is that right? No. Uh, Three. Like a couple of years. Three years? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Do you feel like... But hold on a second, okay? okay? All right, all right. Three years, to some might seem like a long time. Right. To some, three years doesn't sound like that long time, but I'm, I'm telling you right now, okay? To the point of being, that, that'll make people watching sick, we are inseparable. Yeah. We ride on motorcycles. You got to understand, 400 miles every single day. Yeah, you know. And we have these Bluetooth devices on. <laughs> we have not listened to music once. That's crazy. All we do, no, it is crazy. Yeah. All we do is talk. So we know more about each other than people that have been together for 10 years. That's beautiful. And, uh, and, and but she's also insane. Yeah. <laughs> so we just like, do you heckle him? Do you heckle him? Heckle him? Uh, yeah. I like, kind of make fun of. Yeah. Do you tease him while you're driving just to like mess with them a little bit? She teases me, but not heckles me. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> like no backseat driving. She doesn't tell you, Hey, you know, less potholes, man. We, uh, no, no, he drives so good. Yeah, like, he rides so good. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah. that's. I mean, she sometimes her job is like she watches out for deer, oh, which is a real big deal. Especially looks for places for us to stay. Like you know, we're in the middle of you know somewhere in Ohio, and she's like, okay, there's a cool place for coffee that's two miles from here. It's got this many stars. I mean, she's really? doing all this yeah, stuff. Yeah, while while you Ohio. guys are dri- riding? Oh, yeah, yeah just, I'm behind with my phone. Oh, like, that's you know, nice. like, that is awesome. Stuff, taking photo, videos. And we really oh. don't, like, for instance, we're leaving tomorrow, and we don't know. We know we got to be in California and L.A. pretty soon, but we really, we know we want to camp, Yeah. but we really don't know where. And this camping thing is brand new to us, yeah. like totally brand new to us. Yeah, but on our bike, we have a tent, two sleeping bags, little mattresses. I mean, two sleeping pads. Uh, we have our clothes, computer, we got recording computer. for my radio show. We my, got some camping stuff like cups to heat up stuff and and, but we, but what we didn't do when we went camping the first two times, what we didn't do is this little thing that people sometimes bring when they're camping <laughs> called food. Oh, no. So we showed up and we're at a campground that we lucked out. We're at a because you couldn't fit food, and we're like, Leah, I'm starving. We got to get some food. So we went to this gas station, oh, and no. I don't eat, I don't eat um, red meat very often. Okay. I never eat pork. I don't eat meat. <laughs> and we all we had to eat for an entire night was was beef hot dogs and barbecue chips. Oh. <laughs> and that's all we had. We didn't have anything to put on the barbecue chips. We didn't have any bread. We didn't have any dessert. So all we're doing is like eating hot dogs oh. and barbecue chips. That was our dinner. So that we didn't prepare that. We're learning about camping through mistakes. Well, that was one of the first things I saw on your Instagram was that you got your back east. It was one of the first stops and you realized that you got to a camp spot but you didn't have reservations and you realize there are no camp places. Oh available. my God. Yeah, Can so. we talk about this angel that saved our night? Yes. Yeah. We had no reservations. This was in Lake, this was in like Lake Michigan. Lake okay. Michigan. Yeah. Right next to Mackinac city. And we got like the such, we ended up getting like such a beautiful uh, camping spot, but we got there and uh, everything was sold out. Oh. We and went, it's getting dark and we're in the middle of nowhere on a we motorcycle. We went to like four or five like campsites. Everything was sold out. And uh, finally, you go to this place, ask in at the entrance there, and they're like, no, sold out. And this lady comes out and she's like, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, my uh, daughter, she just left and uh, she's got a prime camping spot over there. <laughs> can you please, you know, like yeah. that's available, like they can have it. She already got her money back and everything. Really? So yeah. we ended up camping on the water at Lake Michigan. Wow. If we were there five minutes later, that lady wouldn't have been there. So we lucked out. Yeah. Well, part but, of that, you know, you believe in karma? Uh, what? You believe in karma? Um, if I truly believe in karma, <laughs> yeah. oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. If I truly believe in karma, I know I wouldn't have Leah. But I, I, I mean, I don't believe in like, um, I don't think I believe in luck or like, I believe in like fate. Yeah, you I believe know, in like fate. But the, well, the fact that and stuff like that, like the that it happens, we were there at the right time, and you know, paying it forward. If you're a jerk yeah. and you're an idiot, yeah. you're going to surround yourself with bad stuff. Sure. It, you know, if you open yourself up to like, you know, with the I hate to say the universe or whatever, but yeah. if you open yourself up 
just live we've just been really really lucky it, you know? yeah. like just and even even the bad things that happen on the road like there's been times we've been stuck in you know it's hailing in wherever mayberry is <laughs> yeah. mayberry. no this is the place that, that yeah, this is north the place carolina, it's airy. called it's called mount airy north carolina and it's where andy griffith grew up the and mayor barry actually is it's a real place yeah. it's called mount airy but they have like barney fife's car and, they have all this oh, yeah. and we like the andy griffith show yeah, obviously course, look man. at us you think yeah. andy griffith show and <laughs> and so we went there and it starts hailing and the lady behind the counter is like <laughs> I've lived throughout my life. It's never hailed. <laughs> <laughs> that was the first day. So we were like, oh my God, we got there. It rained. We got into that place. It hailed. So let me tell you something. Yeah. If you live in an area that's suffering a drought, Ask us to ride your town. We will bring the rain. You know what? We ride in rain all the time. This year's been good. We got oh, rain today. But, yeah. you know, Portland is known. And if there's not a day that goes by, most times in the season, we have rain. Look at this, man. It's beautiful. I know. We screwed it so, up. No, yeah. I, we appreciate it, man. <laughs> we, we figured, you know, we're, we're, all we need to go to is go to rainy places. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. We rode, we the sun. San Rollins wrote to Seattle. That's Seattle. true. Seattle didn't rain when we were there. Yeah. See? Southern one was beautiful. But you get us in Southern California, downpour. Well, they need it, man. Yeah. So, so this is what's going on. Not only are they making money for Alzheimer's, <laughs> they're changing the economic and the uh, the climate. <laughs> we, are making good. It, we are making it. Ra- we really make it rain. <laughs> You're making America <laughs> great again. <laughs> Amen, baby. <Ooh>. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, were there some questions on chat? Uh, yeah, I got, I got one. Uh, so Are any nice? No, this, <laughs> this is a great question. Uh, how did Ricky get the gig on MTV, and how does he look back on it now? Oh, yes. yeah. yeah. Um, listen to my podcast, Cat House Hollywood Podcast. Tells all the stories, but I will tell you a couple stories and try to make it quick. Um, one day, I was friends with like my friends were in Guns N' Roses before we were all, everybody made it big. Like in the area I had at my club, the cat house, yeah. all, all my friends, like people say, Oh my, this is my friend in this band. This is my right. friend in this band. These guys were all my friends and they weren't in bands. Right. And it was kind of awkward when all your friends around you are becoming some of the biggest rock and roll bands in the world. Sure. So something happened with like headbangers ball and Axel says like, you know, uh, I could probably help you out with an audition. So Axel Rose calls MTV no and way. sets up my audition. And uh, and then he's like, do you want me to go to your audition with you? And I'm like, sure. So if you watch the old episodes of Headbangers uh, Ball, I had never been on TV, never been on radio. And I was really? scared to death. But is it is it something that it's who you know? Well, yeah, I'm walking in with the biggest rock star in the world. Yeah. Did it help? Mm, yeah, it got me the job. Amazing. And so it, it helps. So I've always, you know, I've always been very, very grateful to the band Guns N' Roses and Doug Goldstein that was, was managing the band at the time. They kind of facilitated it. So it didn't matter. You could be the best TV. You could be a great TV host and be like, yeah, it's coming up and have all the skills in the world, but you can suck and walk in with Axl Rose. You'll still get the gig. <laughs> but you, but you, know, you didn't suck though. That was the thing. No, I you, sucked at the starting. You had a natural thing though. And the thing that really helped is that you loved music, man. I mean, you could tell still that do. the passion for music was there. And that was the difference between MTV and so many other channels, even even like other programming that was kind of going on that was promoting music. Those were more like the Dick Clark kind of things where it was promoting the hits. And the really cool thing about Headbangers was that it brought attention to so many of these obscure hard rock bands, right? And so the metal thing was so underground prior to Headbangers Ball. And then it became so mainstream. It was so like, huge. It was crazy. And right? then I got kind of like, like I always thought, yes, of course, let's play Alice in Chains, but why are we playing, you know, like we die young. No, why are we playing We Die Young or something like that? That's on the radio in the day. Right. If we're gonna have a band, you know, if Motley Crue without you is all or Girls 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 is on top forty radio, don't play Girls Girls Girls. Let's always play songs. So because hard rock and and heavy music got so popular, yeah, it was almost like we're just playing like the hits. Right. And we needed to throw in a lot of the stuff that was underground and give them more time. And and we did. I'm glad that you bring that. So how much influence then did you have to kind of tweak them a little bit to change the programming? How much influence do you have on what MTV plays? Yeah. That's the exact same amount. This is the truth. Yeah. In the five years that I was on MTV on my birthday, I gave them some requests and they played one motorhead video. I have never picked. (laughs) Happy birthday. I've never picked, (laughs) which they probably were playing anyway. (laughs) I have never picked one video in my entire career on MTV so, but everybody thought I did. Right. So if all of a sudden there was a, you know, a 
slaughter video that maybe they didn't like that, that the heavy metal people didn't like they would come to me why are you playing slaughter right. and then there's a lot of fans that like slaughter and war and they're saying why are you paying napalm death or or slayer right. you know and, and i'm like i don't pick any videos but i also am not in the position to give my opinion right so if i say you know here's a video from megadeth this is such a great video and then i've got a go into a really bad video i can't say you know what this band sucks <laughs> yeah, no. because i'll because that was my job just like you can't go right. into the you know grocery store and saying you know i don't like pickles i'm not selling pickles anymore you know this was my job so i just couldn't really have that much of an opinion aren't you so grateful that social media was not around then can you imagine how crazy? No, because then I got my hate letters written with paper and pen and mailed to me. <laughs> you know, before somebody could just said block it away. You got to, yeah, old school. I did. When, when, when I had my haters, at least like if somebody writes something mean about me, they just do 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 on tweet. Yeah. They took the time to get a pen and yeah. paper, write that they hate me, <laughs> and stamp. buy a stamp. I'm like, you know what? That's commitment right there. That there is, yeah. It's you can hate people for free now. Yeah, but it's so yeah. it's too easy. Yeah, it's yeah. Real a lot, like you got so many like great letters from adoring fans. Yeah. You know? Yeah, we were getting we were getting four hundred which is, I mean, it sounds weird. Like I still, to this day, have never referred to anybody as a fan. I will never say that word. Amen. Yeah. But we still get, um, I call them the little people. No, I'm joking. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but we, but I, I used to got, when I was on the show, I would get 400 letters a week. Wow. And, That's um, crazy. and that yeah. was, that was pretty, and they were always pretty much the same questions. Yeah, it was like, why'd you cut your hair? Right. Oh, that's why right. does Dave Mustaine hate you? It was a big deal. Um, it was a lot of the same questions. That's a lot of these questions right now. What was that? <laughs> well, now for the first for the first time ever, people aren't saying why'd you cut because now I grew my hair out. But actually, the thing that really pisses people off is I grew my hair out starting like five or six months ago <laughs> and it just still and it just grew it's, it's a quarantine man huh? it's a quarantine you get a you get a pass yeah. you know what though man? before on headbangers the big deal was that adam curry was way too pretty to be promoting this headbanger headbangers right like and i was ugly enough for the headbangers but, but, you, but you look like a fucking rocker right you look like a rocker i remember that man he was like his hair was perfectly oh, feathered it yeah. was feathered you know mine was too I, i'm embarrassed about that but he, he came out i remember in his leather jacket that looked so stiff and wrong for him you know you know what ever and you know what like, ever happened to old adam curry you know what that poor guy did <laughs> you know what he ended up doing what's that he ended up I mean, he didn't invent it, but he pretty much created something called the podcast. Oh, really? He is called the Podfather. Yeah. He is like a genius and pretty much created podcasting it, in a way. It sounds like he found his calling. And you know what? The worst thing was is, not his calling, and he knew it. He but knew. then when I started podcasting, I said, um, okay, this is what I'm going to call it. Because I do the Cat House Hollywood podcast that I think is great. But then I started one called the Triple R, okay. which we just have all sorts of guests on. Leah's on that show with me. And I said, okay, I'm going to call the show No Agenda because we're going to have No Agenda. So I'm like, okay, let me search. I'm going to do my podcast called No Agenda. Oh, that's Adam Curry's show. He's <laughs> <laughs> after me every time. <laughs> so I called it Ricky Rackman Radio because if you have your name in the show, they can't, like your name is in your show. Yeah. They can't fire you. Oh, yeah. You know, because it's not going to be Ricky Rackman Radio. <laughs> Unless I fire myself. Right. 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 It's yeah. not going to be Ricky Rackman Radio hosted by somebody else. Right. Unless there's another. That's why the Cat House was Ricky Rackman's world famous Cat House. World I famous. Put my name, that's why it's called Ricky's Ride. Look. It's not only because I am an egomaniac, it's because <laughs> nobody's going to take my name. Nobody's going to fire me. If you're an egomaniac, you wouldn't be out riding for charity and throwing all the money that way. That's what I was going to tell you the karma thing you're out there and good things are happening to you because you're putting good stuff forward man and if you i believe man if you put if you pay it forward good stuff comes back around not always but i am um, i'm encouraged because when the pandemic hit it affected everybody on the planet people in the music industry are struggling emotionally physically like financially of course and we have so many mutual friends right that are struggling thinking my whole life is stopped right there's nothing for me here and so for you to put something else out there where you're giving entertainment along the way, you're putting money out there towards good causes, you're doing something productive. And it's, you know, it's not all altruistic. Maybe there's something that's self-satisfying for you guys to get out on the road too. But more people need to see that, I think. I think it's a beautiful thing. Well, we don't have, we don't have publicists. We don't have anybody that works for us at all. And the truth is just by Ricky's ride, 
I have raised close to a hundred thousand dollars for different charities, mm -hmm. real charities. Yeah. And these are charities. Yeah. Like, yeah. No, man. Yeah. <laughs> but but we never. But I'm never going to get an award. I'm never going to get on. I was going to say Ellen. Or Oprah. <laughs> Nobody's going to say. Nobody ever you says may. that stuff. <laughs> All I am is just some. Some dirty old biker rocker with my beautiful girlfriend riding motorcycles. Yeah. And we asked people to, yeah. but today, but today was pretty cool because today, Ricky's ride got tweeted by, um, you know, D. Snyder, Sebastian Box, slash Dale Earnhardt Jr. Wow. You know, all these people are writing about Ricky's ride, and and it's not like I feel like I'm this great philanthropist. I raise money. It just seems like look, that's what I do. Dude. I don't go off on it. I don't take a penny out for expenses. And the truth of the matter is, Ricky's ride 18. And I've had some of the best jobs and done the craziest things in the world. I owned the, the greatest rock and roll club in the world, the right. Cat House. Yeah. But Ricky's Ride 18 was the best time I ever had in my whole life. And this year is just going to equal it because, you know, we just, this sounds like such a cliche, but one of the reasons I don't say fans is uh, this one girl, Holly, started this thing called Ricky's Rack Pack. And there's all these people that say they're Rack Pack. And, and they're just follow everything that I do and everything we do. And they always write social media and they show up at all our events and um, they have become friends. They have honestly yeah. become friends and they're so supportive. And I'm like, and these are from all walks of life. Sure. And, and the coolest thing is all age groups and we see everybody out there. And, you know, like I said, is in my dream, I wish that there was a Ricky's Ride television show. I wish I yeah. actually got paid to do this instead of paying everything to do it. But the truth is, it's like, look, you know, we don't talk politics yeah. and I don't care who you're voting for, but America is great and yeah. it's always been great. And if you go out there and you look and, you know, in every administration, if you look for the hatred, you'll find it. Sure. And it's really easy to find right now. Yeah, it is. But not everybody is hatred. Yeah. Not everybody is hating. Yeah. And there's people like right here in Portland. You know, we said we're going to Portland. Yeah. Yeah. You didn't hear what I was going to say. I might have said something mean. <laughs> but right here in Portland, we, we say, look, everybody, we're going to go to Portland. We're going to go hang out at the Happy Rock Inn. And what's the thing that everybody writes us? Oh, oh it's dangerous. The riots and the dangerous. Yeah. And it's like, look, if you go look for it, yeah. you can find it. But this is, yeah. we're having a good time. We haven't heard anything here. Yeah. And, you know. It's like, stop watching TV so yeah. much. You know what, man? Get That's the best there. thing, that you're able to get out there away from news sources, right? Like, yeah. The best thing for me was to turn out the news years ago. I get news that I have to hear, but. I am. Um, I value the things that I really do have some control over, right? The people you surround yourself by, the things that inspire you. And so much of what you're doing right now is inspiring. You know, when I was a kid and we were all growing up watching Headbangers, right? You couldn't wait to have an experience, right? The Headbangers Ball thing was an experience. So when people wrote those letters to you, it was at a time that they were experiencing first love, you know, they were roller skating with their girlfriends and boyfriends at that time. They were having sex for the first time. They were, you know, and there were probably a lot of people that might have been losing their virginity watching me. Yeah, that's How scary true. is that? You know? that's, How scary yeah, is that? It's like, let me tell you something. But, but, but if you're sitting here and you're having sex with your new girlfriend listening to Angel of Death from Slayer, yeah. wow. But you know, man, that that stuff stays with you forever. Yeah. So I think that's why people are so rabid about it now, that they want to tell you what an impact an experience that you shared meant to them, right? So maybe it wasn't you picking the songs, but you represented the era. And I think it was so important for everybody to feel like they identified with you. Mm -hmm. you know, it was it, weird at first. I bet. I didn't, first of all, I battled with depression my whole life. Really? So I didn't accept it. And um, if one person said you suck and a hundred people said you're good, I'm thinking that one person is right. Yeah. And I'm not listening to the other stuff. And it was very hard for me to, to get like, I hate to say accolades, like like I, I did something with this great band, Code Orange. And they said to me, they're like, dude, dude, you're like a legend. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I gave, I told videos. And it was very awkward for me. And I've never been that guy that's like VIP section, velvet yeah. rope, have my posse. I mean, me and Leah are riding with me and Leah. Yeah. And if somebody says, you know, here, go, go to this place. We'll buy a cup of coffee. We might do it. Yeah. Sometimes we won't. Right. <laughs> but um, probably more we shouldn't. <laughs> but but it's like luck, and especially right now, yeah. if anything, if you can find anything positive about this pandemic, which is going to be tough, but if you can find anything positive about this pandemic, in a sense, it's the great equalizer. Sure, it is. And sometimes those big rock stars that were up there, yeah, are in the same boat that a lot of us are, and 
you know, so all of a sudden the guy that was used to playing shows, making their money touring, that was all cocky, yeah. is also having the same issues that the guy that used to work at the supermarket can't go to work anymore because they have less employees. It's you know? absolutely true, man. So in any case, it's the great equalizer. And and I know it's 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 really tough to say this and people aren't going to probably like hearing me say that, but there's a lot of positive things that people can gain sure from this it's well, perspective yeah. i mean yeah perspective and i think also like because of like being confining in your home you know like you go back to like what's really important in life you know like not you know you can't go shop you can't go be super social and stuff so you it's more like um genuine you know like living and the more yeah, it's more organic. I mean, yeah. doing stuff like, authentic. you know, and now like, authentic. like, hey, yeah. we go out with our friends. Let's go get Mexican food. Let's go hang out and let's go all do this. And I do that. And now it's like, I miss going and talking to my friends. Yeah. I miss going, seeing people. <laughs> I miss seeing people like, hey, brother, what's up? Yeah. I miss doing that stuff. My God, I miss going to live shows. Oh, yeah, buddy. Yeah. You know, I miss yeah. going to yeah. live shows. Yeah. And now, you know, when this thing ends, and I hope it's soon, yeah. but who knows? Right. But when it does end, let me tell you something, people. There are going to be so many damn concerts. <laughs> every band you're going to go to get to go to shows every single day. You know, it's like, because all those cancels that were toured, it's yeah. like, oh, do you want to see Guns N' Roses tonight? Yeah, but let's see them. But what about the Foo Fighters playing tomorrow? Yeah. Okay. And then Metallica's playing the day after tomorrow. It's like, everybody is going to be touring. The, the, the people, I don't want to call them the fans, the people want to go see those shows. Those artists want to play as bad as the people want to go see shows. Yes. Let me but tell what you. I commend is the artists. Not just the artists that are sitting here waiting to get back out on the road and make money, but the artists that are making themselves available through streaming stuff, yep. through recording music. Even I recorded a song online. I heard it. Yeah. Thank you. It was great. Yeah. One. Somebody did. No, man. <laughs> but, um, you know, the bands that are getting together and playing stuff, I saw a cool thing with Sepultura and Danko Jones. Oh. And it was just them getting together and doing songs. And wow. I think uh, Scott Ian has done some, and a lot of bands yeah. are getting together. LA Guns did a show at at a sound stage and you know stuff like that people making themselves more available you know i kind of laughed at that whole cameo thing which people would pay right, yeah. to get celebrities to do shout outs right and then as i saw everybody doing it i started doing it sure i mean i charged as much as a talking donkey does <laughs> hey, i mean i could have had you for because i bought the talking donkey but uh yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know, the uh, the cameo thing I think is an interesting deal. We, I've talked to a lot of other artists that have done it. They felt like it was a sellout at first until they realized that it's a valuable experience that you bring somebody to, mm -hmm. you know? And it's not like, I don't feel like it's cheapened your brand by being out mm -hmm. there because you do a nice thing for somebody, even if somebody throws you a few bucks to say, hey, man, you know, tell my girlfriend I think she's awesome or something like that. You know, wish them a happy birthday. I said, you don't want me to do that. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, I am um, thinking about the, the <clears throat> bands that you talked about early on in the Cat House days. Your buddies, you bring your buddies in to play these shows, LA Guns and Guns N' Roses, all these bands that were playing the Cat House early on. When the Sunset Strip blew up, man, when the 80s rock vibe happened, all the hair bands were blown up at the same time. And a rat had been around there a little earlier than some of Don't the other bands. bands. Well, I loved the, the uh, yeah. But nobody in the eighties started a hair band. That's true. Nobody it's, said, it, it bands, Hey, what right. kind of music do you want to yeah, play? Hair yeah, band yeah. music. They said metal. They said hard rock. Yeah. They might've said glam. They might've said thrash, yeah. but nobody said, dude, let's put together a hair metal sure. band. Okay. So, <laughs> so that I can compartmentalize these all into one thing. The bands that were really taken off at the time were about your pals, right? So you're saying that they, it was weird to see your friends just take off and hit global success. Were there bands that really felt, you felt like they maintained their integrity and they stayed really cool even after the money started flowing in? I'm not looking for dirt on the guys that ended up being kind of douchey when the money started happening because we know those guys, right? But yeah, I'm talking about Joff and I. We've met them all. But uh, no, I think... Um, I really want to know about some of those guys that you felt like, you know, you talked about Axel bringing you on and making a recommendation for you to get the job. Those are not the things that get reported, right? It's <clears> really <throat> cool for people to find out that there's philanthropy and there's a genuine sincerity to some of these rock stars that don't have to be promoted by doing good things. So tell me about some of the rockers, the early days that are still really cool when they, um, how about people that are much better than they were in the early days? I want to hear that. Slash and Duff. Oh, of course. I mean, there's Duff is one of the most, and I believe me yeah. when I tell you this, I never thought you'd ever hear these words coming out of my mouth. 
Duff is very, very intelligent oh, and yeah. knowledgeable in so many things. And before it was like, Duff, come on, <laughs> you know, right. Is somebody tying his shoes, but, uh, and Slash was just such a sloppy drunk, right. but they're both such really, really good people. But bands that stayed the same, it's hard because I know I didn't stay the same sure. when I was this guy that was just as drunk that opened a club and then I'm buying a brand new Corvette and living all this stuff. I changed. I wasn't sure. the same person. It was hard. Yeah. How old you were know? you when you opened the club? How old was I? Yeah. I don't remember. Early 20s. Okay. It's hard for anybody at that age, right? To have some maturity. I didn't mean to interrupt you. I just I never of, got maturity. Yeah. <laughs> I never did. <laughs> you know, I think some level of, of maturity comes with donating money to charity for good causes, not taking a dime of it of yourself, you know. Mm-hmm. I um but I, next the next ride yeah. is gonna be Ricky's ride. For Ricky. For Ricky. <laughs> yeah. Like like we'll say today we're raising yeah. money for right. my mortgage. No, just <laughs> and tomorrow we're raising money for uh Leah's. I was whatever. gonna say you want to keep this relationship together. Ricky's ride for Leah, right? Her ta- the tattoo it fund. Is a, it is her ride. Yes. Yeah. Every ride when we did the first ride, yeah, I said, look. I first, when I first met her, I told her, because I've been doing Ricky's ride for a long time. Yeah. I did one lap around America by myself. And I, but at that point, it was something different. I mean, to be quite honest, at that point, I was riding away from something. I was not happy with my situation. Okay. And I was riding away from something just to get away. I just never wanted to be home. I wanted to be on a motorcycle every day. And I was miserable. You want to talk about that? Like, wait, what were you I just did. What do you want to talk about it? <laughs> okay. All right. I just wasn't happy. Yeah. I just wasn't happy. And um, with Leah, it's like, oh, let's stop and explore something. Hey, there are these cool people in Portland, the Happy Rock Inn. Let's go there. Yeah. Hey, these guys say that there's this great sandwich in Pittsburgh. Uh, we shouldn't have gone there, but we did. <laughs> but uh, Leah's still, Leah dice, still tra- traumatized. <laughs> but it's it's like now we're just like, like, look, the word freedom is, is used a lot. Yeah. But there is nothing more free than getting on a motorcycle. Tomorrow morning, we wake up not sure where we're going to be at night. Yes, freedom. Yes, also very stressful sure. because we're not sure where we're going to be tomorrow night, yeah. you know? But in, in but, one case, it's very, we could stay in a hotel, we could stay in a tent, you know? Do you, uh, you feel like there's also a sense of, you know, we know it's going to work out, right? Even if it's scary. Yeah, you really? <laughs> she the, does. The, uh, I'm going to move this here so we can see a little more of you. Well, you don't? That's yeah. the greatest thing about wearing masks. The more I age, I'll, I'll keep on wearing masks. <laughs> Lisa, you don't need to wear a mask. I'm like, I do. Yeah. <laughs> but you can have, you know, the different metal masks. You know, you've seen the jean, tongue, and all that. You know. Oh, wait till you see our masks when we get to L.A. Oh, yeah? You yes. got some special ones waiting for you? Oh, yeah. What do you have? Um, Your tat? No. Yeah. Tell them. What, the stuff we found? Yes. Knock off oh. Chanel, knock oh. off Louis Vuitton. Okay. <laughs> we got a Chanel and Louis Vuitton. They're knock off. We bought them at like a coffee shop. But I'm just like, Leah, when we pull into LA, we got to rock these masks. There you go. You know? Yeah, riding up in Rodeo with the, your <laughs> Louis Vuitton mask. Yeah, exactly. But tell me a little bit about Leah. You are, you're a wonderful tattoo artist. So how did you guys Thank meet? You. Um. Well, uh, Ricky contacted me to get a tattoo and we just... Uh, and we hit it up. But how did I find out about you? How did you? I don't know. How did Got you? Got your number off the bathroom wall. Oh, right through a, <laughs> through a tweet from Ice T. Ice T. Wait a minute. Yeah. Ice T tweeted about you. You read Ice T. No? no, 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 no. One of us sent it. I know Ice T. Okay, I yeah. Think. We both follow him. Yeah. What a badass. Oh, he's so oh, cool. Amazing. Yeah. He's so cool. Good. Yeah. He's yes. Ice T. Yeah. You know, he's Ice T. Yeah. Uh, like, I, I just know? listened to his podcast, the Joe Rogan thing, man. And, oh, I got to hear that. Wait, no, no. Yeah. It was Marin. It was Mark Marin's podcast. Oh. That's what it was. But he talked about, and I don't mean to jump up. Okay. We're going to get to your story. The coolest thing about his story, about body count, when he said, I grew up not listening to what everybody else was. My family was listening to, Hendrix, Sabbath. My first album was the first Black Sabbath album. But all of the other guys were listening to like Parliament and Stevie Wonder and James Brown. And he said, first time I heard guitar on Funkadelic, where it combined heavy metal guitar with the funky stuff from the hood. And he said, I want that. And that was the formation of his idea for Body Count. And he said he wanted that with like the punk sensibility of suicidal, because he said at the time, all the rockers were wearing spandex. And he said, I can't wear that in the hood, man. So he said, how are we going to get away with this thing? So he said, we, we dressed like suicidal. 
right? We come out with the metal sensibility and the foreboding doom of Black Sabbath. And then when we sing, what's well, all about in our hood? And uh, I thought that's so it's, it's authentic. Right? When Ice T released Cop Killer, right? Can't they do that were now. banned. They were banned everywhere. And so Ernie C, the guitarist of Body Count, was a Cat House regular. And I'm like, do you guys want to play here? Yeah. And so Ice T reached out and he's like, Ricky, like, because Ice T used to come to the club too. And he's like, do you really want body count to play the cat house? You know, we're banned in Los Angeles. I'm like, I don't care. Like all of Los Angeles. Oh, no, they were banned in, in everywhere. But okay. LA, it's like when you're calling out the LAPD, yeah. you know, and you put out an album called Cop Killer, right. cops aren't going to be loving your <laughs> right. music. So, a little, um, little touchy but, subject I, but I was like, you guys can play my club. And I, and body count played the cat house and they were killer. Uh, and there were so many cops outside. Oh, really? But anyways, yeah. that's, go back. Uh, to the so, I'm also, sorry. One of us, one of us, one of us was, answering a tweet to ice T. I think maybe Leah yeah. answered something or she retweeted something that ice T said to me or something, but then like, no, I think I just, I, I answered, I had just tweeted something that he ice T tweeted and to then, me, well, somehow you were in my, whatever. No, in any case, I wrote her and I was like, I mean, Hey, I'd like to get tattooed, which is the obvious. <laughs> kind of pick. I have no game. I have no game. But you've got like, okay, here's this girl, like the most beautiful girl in the world. Yeah. And you don't say like, hi, would you like to go have coffee with me at time? She's a tattoo artist. So I'm like, hi, would I'd like to inquire about getting a tattoo from you sometime. It's more legit that you have tattoos everywhere. At least you weren't like completely un Right. Yeah. But I think she... You take it from there. Yeah, let's hear it. <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, it's like um, we we met in L.A., right? I tattooed you in L.A. and. Uh, but she had the hots for me, I think, because I don't think she would have come to L.A. just to tattoo me. Did you come from Paris? No, no I was I, I was in Vegas at okay, the time. Okay, all right. And he was like, yeah, I'm going to be in L.A. and uh, I'd love to get a tattoo from you. And I was like, well, come to Vegas. And he's like, no, I'm not going to go to uh, Vegas. I can't because... Uh, were you on the right at the time, or I don't know? I said I can't come to Vegas because in five years there's going to be this thing called COVID. Yeah, right. <laughs> so it's better for me not to travel. He said it. He, he should have listened to you. Should have listened to you then, right? So it, it, well, we met. So we met in LA, and, and it was um, all innocent. Yeah, yeah. It was innocent I, a then, couple times. So a yeah. couple, couple of tat sessions, huh? A couple of tat sessions. No, like I went to go get tattooed, and the tattoo that she finally did on me after coming to LA was like. That big, like yeah. that big. Oh, trap yeah. stamp? No, <laughs> no. Because like, you, you wanted to get like a, a orca, an orca, oh, yeah. and I drew something like pretty substantial size, and you were like, I don't know, like we chatted for a long time. We ended up not having the time. I ended up doing like a little something like that size, and uh, then I was on another ride. Okay, and she was in Vegas. And uh, we'd sort of chatted, but not really. It wasn't like really flirting. We weren't like, I mean, I I wanted to, yeah. but I didn't. I was like, she, she, to me, she was like Leah Vendetta, Ink Master. You know, yeah. I, I thought she was way out of my league. And oh then, um, huh? <laughs> well, now I realize you weren't. <laughs> but, uh, oh! And this is where the relationship ends, right here. <laughs> but then I, I have to rock in. We started talking all the time. <laughs> you remember this place? Thanks, <laughs> <laughs> but then um, we started just, and it was always innocent. But it was like then we started talking about kind of friend stuff. Yeah. And then we met sometime again. This was later, and then we kissed, and it was. Fireworks. Oh, look yeah, at this. It's like, I know that sounds stupid. It doesn't. But it was like, look at it. Have you ever kissed somebody other? where you think like, my heart might. Oh, that sounds so bad. <laughs> no, never mind. So anyway, I boned him. All of a sudden, oh I, all, of, okay. all of a sudden, Ice T is on. He's deleting. Oh, yeah, right now, he's, <laughs> it's really weird because like my relationships that I've had in the past, except pretty much I've tried to keep kind of secret. Yeah. But with Leah, it's like, you know, like. Sing it to the world. Yeah, I don't care because people like. That sounds so weird to say, but people like Ricky and Leah. They like yeah. what we do. They like our traveling. They yeah. like, you know, some stuff. So anyway, we and kissed. You, and, and, and we had fun. Then I yeah. rode to Florida to get tattooed by her in the winter. I rode all the way to Florida in the winter just to get tattooed by her. 
because she only does tattoos in Florida? No, because she was tattooing well, in Florida then. Okay. Yeah, I was like traveling and tattooing in different places. And uh, I was in Florida at the time. And it was winter time. You lived in North Carolina. And you drew, you rode all the way down. And it was raining and cold. And you wanted to get your hand tattooed. <laughs> so I rode all the way down. And she said, it's not a good idea to get your hand tattooed. Said, oh, my I God. Can't, I can't tattoo your hand if you're going to write back in... I want to pause for a second. Yeah. Coyotes? Sounds like a siren. The coyotes. Oh. Right? What? The coyotes? Coyotes. Oh, yeah, it's an ambulance. Damn it. Yeah, thanks, Roy. Really. Damn it. Yeah. Hey, hey, by the way, everybody watching the news, if you're watching all those riots, it's all coyotes. It's coyotes. It's not cop sirens. And you see everybody with those flares, they're actually fireworks, okay? It's not graffiti, it's street art. They're not breaking the windows, they're remodeling. <laughs> I just had to break the tension because the, the romance that was going on right there was really, really heavy. I will say this without making people vomit. It was like something that was a little bit unique between her and sure. I. And it was just like, like I, I used to hate when I'd hear couples talk yeah. because it was so like, it, made me, it was so disgusting. But now we're that disgusting couple because it really was like, like I just want to hang out with her all the time. That's you know, well, and this is and the, the true test, the right? True well, what? And so yeah. when you go on a ride with a motorcycle yeah. with somebody, and sometimes you're riding in pure heat for you know hundreds of hours and it smells terrible places, you really can tell because if you get in an argument, yeah. oh. you can't walk into the other room. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No time out for Ricky, no. man. Oh. And then it just kind of, then it just kind of, we just, you know, and and. You know, my family loves her. her yeah, family is t tolerates me. <laughs> they live in France, so they don't. So they don't understand what I'm saying. Did they know who he was? No, no. But you did. You knew the Ricky. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, when when Ricky was like, "Hey, I want to get tattooed," I was like, "That's why I came to um, LA." I was like, "Oh my God, Ricky!" Because in France, you guys used to watch him from wherever you were. Sure. I used to watch Ricky when I was in France. And uh, so, <clears throat> you know, but it was different than I mean, your parents were probably a little like concerned, right? That you're like, oh, there's this rocker from the, the U.S. that's uh, uh, gonna whisk you away. Well, I guess I don't know about what, your what are they gonna say. <laughs> Do you really want to go out with this guy with all these tattoos? <laughs> <laughs> I start going out with Leah. I start going out with Leah, and my sister says she has a lot of tattoos. <laughs> Because she's got more tattoos than I do. Oh, yeah. It's like, what are you going to say? But it, that's uh, you guys fight over your tattoos more than anything else, I'm sure. No, the yeah. great thing is, and anybody that's ever been married or dated a tattoo artist, the only time they get like, for me to get a tattoo from Leah, thank God for the quarantine, because I never would have gotten a tattoo from Leah. Because right. I can't get tattooed from her, because who's she going to tattoo? Me or a paying customer? Oh, yeah. So yeah. with the quarantine, she couldn't tattoo anybody, but she got oh, tattooed. So I got a tattoo during the quarantine. Nice. Yeah, you got. You've probably, have you done a lot of celebrity tattoos? Um, <clears throat> I mean, I, well, I've been tattooing since 95, so I've done a Everybody. lot, lot yeah. of work. What, uh, uh, what's the most extreme tattoo piece that you've done? Oh, I don't know. I have a really bad memory. Like I've, I've done. Go on her so Instagram, Lee Vendetta, and okay. you can see some of the stuff she's done because cool. yes, you know, I love Leah. She's my girl, yeah. but she's like, she's the, a badass. She's the, as far as tattoos, it's like she comes back and, and, you know, I never say you're bringing your work home with you. It's like, she comes back <laughs> and she goes, Oh, this is what I did today. And I'm like, dude, I used to read tattoo magazines, yeah. but now I got Leo and Detta coming in, showing me her work. I'm like, that's so badass. That's you know? the mutual interest, mutual respect. It's awesome, man. Yeah. I love it. You, uh, you mentioned that you both have family members too, that have been affected by Alzheimer's. Right. So how did, Ryan's foundation get to you. How did you guys decide to pick that one to ride? Ryan Blaney's a NASCAR driver. Okay. Ryan Blaney loves metal. Okay. Ryan Blaney got a leave and did a tattoo. Yeah, he's awesome. Ryan Blaney's he's a good person. Okay. There's also um we've all been affected by somebody with Alzheimer's with Alzheimer's. And uh also a lady that's just a rack pack that has raised thousands of dollars told us how her family was associated with Alzheimer's. I'm like, there's just all the signs there. Yeah. You know? And also we wanted to find something in this climate 
that wasn't political. Sure, and it's did. also hard to say, like, I want to raise money to, you know, help the starving orcas. And it's really hard when people are saying, you know, I can't afford to buy food right. and I want to help the killer whales, even right. though that's important to me. Yeah, absolutely. But we stayed away from animal charities and we stayed for, away for something that could that affect people. You know, we've done cystic fibrosis. We did stop soldier suicide. We did um, Alzheimer's. And uh, the first ride I ever did was, no, the first fundraiser I ever did, ever, was for Farm Aid. Really? And I, and I think I only raised like, you know, $5,000 or whatever. And they sent me the very first Farm Aid ticket signed by Willie Nelson. Oh, I'm like, man. I'm like, dude, <laughs> fundraising is fun. <laughs> yeah. Have you guys hung since until Willie? Yeah, you look, I've got ticket number one. I've never, I've, I, I, I don't think I've really met him. I got to sort of introduce him at a concert, but I've never met Willie Nelson. I, I, I just talked to a woman who was doing, she was in Boise, actually. She yeah. did, she does all sorts of promotional events for concerts to come through the Boise area. She did an outdoor festival, I think at Aspen, where they had Willie Nelson was the, the primary guest, but in the audience was the Dalai Lama there with a oh. whole bunch of monks. He was there for some kind of retreat, but he came to the Willie Nelson show. Oh, and I thought, awesome. how amazing would that be to be sitting here like, wait, like, you know, just, just to me that uh, I just wouldn't picture that pairing, you know, but I would imagine backstage, you know, back on the bus, that would have made for some interesting stories, you know. So we went to Slayer's Slayer's very last show ever. And Jason Momoa was there. Oh, yeah. He's then, a big fan, right? Yeah. He's a metal uh, guy. Comic Bill Burr came up and told me he was a fan of Headbangers Ball. And I was like, that's really cool when, when somebody that you like yeah. goes up and recognizes you. And that was kind of Post Malone was there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and he's like you know, notoriously a metal fan too, right? Well, he used to be in a hardcore band. Okay. Yeah, I, I saw the Nirvana cover that he did, right? With the uh, was it Grohl and he did Heart Shaped Box and it was wicked. I didn't see that. It's a really cool video that's tough because he also was on Joe Rogan the other day and I couldn't understand 15 minutes of it because they all did a ton of mushrooms and got loaded before the interview. Oh, wow. So it's kind of a waste of four hours, you know, but, mm. but he's a gifted dude at heart shaped box. Great cover, man. He did a really cool cover. I think, I think Grohl was part of that thing. And then maybe Tommy Lee too, but anyway, that's somebody who fame never changed. Really? He's exactly the same. Dave Grohl. Oh, Oh Dude. my God. Everybody in the Foo Fighters are so cool. Like that's a band when we did Ricky's Ride 18, we're riding across the country and we go, we're going to be in Chicago in two days and they're playing Wrigley Field. Right. So we went there and got to hang out with them. And Dave Grohl is like, such a good dude don't you love that he's really that guy because everybody wants to hate him because he's such a badass he's such a good dude who does good things for everybody and you kind of think if you're scared people want nobody wants to hate no Dave nobody Grohl. no you want to hate shooter it. jennings <laughs> shooter jennings doesn't like dave Grohl. how can how can anybody not like dave i don't Grohl? know yeah that's the thing he's so likable right mm -hmm. every girl wants him every guy wants to be him you know he's one of those guys but yeah it's funny i was on this camping trip with my son we were talking about Dave Grohl, and he said, "Wait, he was in another band besides Foo <laughs> Fighters." And I said, "Yeah, as, as a matter of fact, yeah, yeah." Because you know, we watched the little intro from your appearance with Nirvana on Headbangers, oh, yeah. and but Dave wasn't there, right? It was just Chris no. Novoselic and and uh, Kurt, Cobain. Kurt Cobain, and Kurt came out in that crazy like ball his, his, his ball gown, the big yeah. huge yellow thing. You, you roll your eyes when I <laughs> mentioned this, <laughs> but. What an entrance, right? I mean, if you're going to make I guess I didn't realize yeah. that's the most viewed. That's the, I mean, that was a historic show. Yeah. I'm interviewing Kurt Cobain right. and he's got a ball gown on and I didn't get, oh, it's a headbangers ball. He wore a ball gown. Right. I didn't understand the joke. <laughs> and then and I'm just like, this guy's out of zone. And people watch it and they think that I was uncomfortable, but that's not the truth. The truth is I love Nirvana. I used to own the album Bleach. Yeah. And I thought that album was just rocking. And then I'm so excited to meet Kurt Cobain. He was passed out in the dressing room before he we went on. And then he came on. He was like, and when artists are like, oh, mm, yeah, I'm just like, I don't care who you are. You totally. know, you're on the Headbangers Ball. Yeah. At least enjoy it. If you don't want to be here, don't be here. Right. So I was kind of bummed out because I was so excited because I love Nirvana. Yeah. But, you know, you know and that show is has been in documentaries has been in books is all over the place it's unfortunate right that that was kind of a drag but well yeah and, but i'm still in the nirvana yeah, thing. And, and were there other artists that showed up like that that were just so fucked up and out of it that just kind of ruined the experience the first interview i ever did on headbangers ball i think 
I was so nervous. I'd never done any TV and Michael Schenker was on oh. and I'm talking to him and he's just doing so. <laughs> and I'm just trying to ask him questions. He's like, <laughs> and I just finally was like, I'm like, and I just finally said, stop it. That's annoying. <laughs> and it was just like, so bad. That was your first interview? That was one of my first. Oh, my and I was so nervous and I'm like, uh, is there anybody else that made you real nervous? Nervous? Yeah. When I first started Headbangers Ball, I just started. Remember, like, I'm like, oh, now I'm on TV. And they're like, yes, Ricky, you're going to go to Europe and you're going to do the Monsters of Rock Festival oh. at Donington, England. I'm like, okay. And they go, okay, Ricky, go over there. You're going to be interviewing Aerosmith. Mm. And even though Steven Tyler had been to the Cat House before, he's still a rock star. Yeah, absolutely. As and, big as it gets. And I was a little bit nervous when I was interviewing him. Um, was there anybody recently that you can remember that I've ever been nervous about interviewing? Mm-hmm. There's certain people that I've interviewed that I just... Burt Reynolds, maybe? Burt Reynolds might be a little bit ner- ner- nervous. Yeah. I bet. just want to do a good job. I, yeah. It's not that I want them to like me. And I'm, you know, for me to think that I can compete with like Dan Rathers and these people that are the greatest interviewers, think to think that I can compete with them is crazy. But when I interview somebody, I'm like... I want them to think this was the greatest time and, and I really like Ricky, you know? Yeah. And um, it's happened sometimes, yeah. but most of the time it's just like, it's just another interview for them. So, and the other thing is I don't prepare. Yeah. You know, I yeah, don't but, prepare. But cause you're conversational. Yeah, it's exactly. Like, it's authentic. That's good. Well, sometimes I should have prepared, but um, have, you, ever, just, have yeah. you had those guys that say, dude, just read my book. I already, you know, when you ask them a question, they say, I, everything's already written. Because most people that you interview have been asked the same question a million times, right? And they don't want to be asked it again. But if you had somebody that was that off put? The thing is, most of the bands all went to the Cat House or didn't want to wait in line in the Cat House. So if you're a dick to me on that show, you're yeah. not getting into my club. Right, yeah. And it was as easy as that because they all wanted they all wanted to go to the club and they all hung out at the club. And I was, I was very, I was very, um, as much as I never, I mean, Look, my friends became the biggest rock band in the world. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And so I don't care if you act like a jerk, you're a jerk. Yeah. You know, if your band's good, even like, like some people, I said something on social media, how when I grew up and I was a kid to me, nobody was better than Ted Nugent, mm-hmm. man. I love doggy dog and free for all and double live gonzo. And I loved all these Ted Nugent Cheers. songs. <laughs> and then I saw him play. And he kept on saying the N word mm. every other song. And then he was doing all this other stuff. And I'm like, and then I start reading all this stuff about him. All of a sudden I'm like, I don't listen to the new anymore. It's like, why do you put things, you know, in front of it? If he's, if he does good music, doesn't he do good music? Just if he's, you know, I'm like, if you're a racist and yeah, you're, you're talking not a good about guy. stupid stuff. And I'm not a hunter, but I don't have anything what against hunters. Yeah. Fuck yeah. But, you know, it's like I ain't going to listen to your music right. anymore. Right. If, and the same thing goes the other way. And I'll, yeah. I'll be honest because I imagine they're never going to see this, okay? A nudes turn it off. Oh, I don't care about Ted Nugent. Yeah. The, oh, just got an arrow in the neck. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I was in Alabama and I wasn't the biggest fan. I'll just be honest. It yeah. wasn't necessarily my type of music was a band three doors down. Sure, yeah. It wasn't my type of music. Yeah. So I'm in Talladega and I talked to them and they played a NASCAR race. So I went to go to go talk to the guys at Three Doors Down and interview them. And they're like, dude, we used to watch Headbangers Ball. It's so clear at the show's so And then I'm like, actually their music's not so bad. <laughs> yeah. you know? So sometimes you meet somebody yeah. that's really, really cool. And, uh, and their music isn't so bad, Yeah, but you know, sure thank is. God when I met Nickelback, they were kind of dicks. So it's okay not uh, to like them, <laughs> but, yeah. um, but there's a lot of bands that I've met that, you know, yeah. I, it can't help but put my opinion sure, man. in the way the person are. It's just like if I have a favorite athlete and that guy was like a jerk, he's not my favorite athlete anymore. The cool thing about it is that you base your opinion off personal experience you've had. It's not stuff that you read on TMZ or whatever, right? You're not hearing secondhand opinion about somebody the fact that you'd see the nudes do this stuff and you think all right yeah i can base my opinion that he's a douchebag by actually watching and hearing him do this right so that's a big problem i mean i talked about social media earlier and how it can be toxic it can be beneficial for great things like this right i mean it's great that people can find out about ricky's ride and they can find out where you're going to be so they can help donate get the foundation supported but it can also foster a lot of negativity and a lot of, you know, pr- produce hate. And so I don't get it. Yeah. I, I mean, the thing is, I get a lot of it. Yeah. And to say that it's I'm Teflon and it, you know, now it's like 
Block, delete, block, delete. Yeah, but I think everybody does, though. Ev- everybody. It's, it's social media. Everybody it's, does, you know. Entire web. Everybody, you know, like people, there's like all those like entire web trolls and they're like right. hidden behind their screen at home and yeah. like nobody sees them. And they, if there's so much, every time you see somebody's social media, there's always haters yeah. now. You but the know? thing that, like, that I said, which I don't understand, is like, <laughs> look. There's people that are on my social media talking shit about me. Okay, okay, I swear. Yeah, of course. People talking caca about me. Okay. <laughs> now here's the thing. I hate mayonnaise. I hate mayonnaise so much, right? But I do not get in my car, drive to the grocery store, walk in the aisle, look for the condiments, and then go, I hate you, mayonnaise. Fuck you, mayonnaise. I don't do that. So why are you searching on social media to find me to tell me you don't like me? It's like, you're spending that much effort to find me to tell me you don't like me? Yeah, man. You're not going to say like, oh, I just bumped into you on the social media. Right. No, you came to search me right. to tell me that you don't like me. It's like, fuck yeah. 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 Basic, right? Absolutely, man. Fuck them. You know, I, 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 so the, the the goal is right to promote the stuff you love and then just forget about the shit that you hate yeah. back in the day man when you put the cat club together and you're on cat house oh, i'm sorry no, <laughs> big difference the cat club we've got some experience with that was a ron jeremy thing that i won't no, talk about no, no. the cat club actually the cat club really was a club in new york Oh, there was right, called, there right, was right. by I think a guy named Tommy Gunn had the Cat Club in New York, and I had the Cat House in Hollywood. Sorry, but yeah. then they also Slim Jim also opened a club on Sunset, right? Called that, the Cat Club for a little bit, right? And Slim's a good guy, like, Slim's like a great a, guy, awesome guy. But when you put the hat, Cat House together, you were such a music fan. I want to know like the origin of like your passion for music, man. What really got you? It just does. Yeah. Okay. I mean, okay so you're a high school kid who loves music, right? And you was it the goal. I'm going to have the greatest rock and roll club in the country. So like, how did it happen? Did you go to a concert and say, holy shit? No, I always wanted to be a rock star. I always wanted to be in a band. Same. Back when the cat house was opening, I was in a band called Virgin. Okay. And obviously nobody's ever heard of the band Virgin. So the club, thank God the club worked, (laughs) but it's really hard when everybody's like, oh, let's go look at all the LA bands. Okay. Let's sign that Jane's addiction. Let's sign that LA guns. Oh yeah. Let's definitely sign that guns and roses Virgin. No, let's go sign the, you know, so we got passed on all the time. And um, they just didn't want to mess with Richard Branson, right? They just said that's no. true, you know? but I, I don't think they, I don't know if they had whatever version they did then. I'm silly anyway, it's all right, but um, now that I look at it, but you're gigging though. I thought what? you got signed. Oh, Didn't no, we did get a demo deal with Virgin. Oh, yeah. oh shit, you are you signed? really Virgin yeah, Records? We, we recorded four songs, okay, and you were gigging around. Playing clubs, yeah, okay, yeah, playing like Troubadour, like we, we had line two nights at the whiskey, okay. What year was that? Who knows? <laughs> the forties, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So World War II had just ended, and you're uh, you're booking shows on on Sunset. I was playing with Frankie Valley, <laughs> <laughs> who's still kicking ass right now. It's crazy. Drummer from Missing Persons is actually his main gig is the Frankie Valley gig. How crazy is that? Uh-huh. Anyway. So cat club, uh, the cat house, sorry. I did it twice. I did, man. And I'd be drinking ginger beers. This is sad. I told you I've been camping. I'm tired. No, um, I was just thinking about that transition. You're tired. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thinking about this kid, man, who just grew up loving rock music. Most people don't end up with a club on Hollywood and, and su- in Hollywood on Sunset or anywhere else. Right. I mean, so. How did you do it, man? Were you like... I was a club DJ. Okay. And I was a really good club DJ, but I was playing new wave and sometimes I'd be playing, you know, hip hop or rap, but mostly like new wave. And sometimes I'd be playing at certain clubs and I'd start getting into like a lot of, because I was into a lot of old school hip hop way before really? broke. Okay. And I'd start playing this and people in the D, in the club promoters was like, don't play that music. You know what kind of crowd it's going to bring in. I'm like, okay. Mm. So we play, you know, regular Flock Seagull and stuff, <laughs> stuff like that. And, uh, <laughs> safe music. Safe. I understand. Yeah. But, but we start playing that. So then I became a club promoter and I started promoting all oh, this. You guys got to listen to my Cat House Hollywood podcast. Yeah. All these stories and I've told them so many times, but I'll, I'll tell the five, the, the minute version. Okay. Here's the elevator pitch. I was, I started promoting clubs that were dance clubs. I was a really good DJ. One night, Tommy Lee and Heather Locklear walk in. I'm scratching. I'm doing all this stuff. They walk in. I'm this metal guy playing dance music, and I start scratching with shout, shout no over hip hop songs. 
Tommy Lee asked me to DJ his wedding. I DJ Tommy Lee and Heather Locklear's wedding. I'm playing rock and roll. I go, you know what? I want to open up a dance club that plays rock and roll and only rock and roll. And then I become friends with Tammy, who's starting his band Faster Pussycat. And then I, we started to promote a club. And the, the truth is, it's been said in movies and it's been said in a million times. We opened the club to get free drinks and meet strippers. Oh my and that's God. the honest to God truth. <laughs> and it's been said so many times. Yep. And then what happened is, after it had been open a couple of years, after it had been a couple of years, I got sober and my addiction switched to business. So all of a sudden I started making shirts and I started becoming, and I got obsessed with it. Yeah. You know? And just worked in trying to establish this brand that to this day, I never sold out the brand Cat House Hollywood. It might not be worth as much as it was, but, you know, Leah's wearing the, the hoodies that were still oh, selling. Yeah. Cat House shirts still sell worldwide. And, you know, these people are like, I'm this merchandise company called, you know, whatever they are. And I'm like, okay, that's great. I'm doing like, okay sales for like 30 years, sure. you know? Yeah putting the t-shirts in the envelope myself, having Leah maybe write up an order, doing stuff like that. And the Cat House brand is strong. Yeah. You know, it was very strong because I've never done anything really oh. with it. But well, it was that thing I clap about? Yeah. 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 That's called the stupid business no, man. It's, but because it's, it should be a movie or a book. Integrity though, I mean, that, and it will be a movie and a book. Yeah, next time, they, next time somebody asks for your mortgage payment, you say, I got the money, but I got props i got integrity <laughs> it's like yeah integrity don't buy food you know <laughs> strippers and free drinks man i think that's why the happy rock opened up right jim yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, 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 hey jeff do we have any other uh, any other comments there in the chat oh man i got so many so many so many personal questions i want to ask uh go ahead but also uh look uh we got one uh, that says, what was the craziest story that happened in the cat house that you can tell us about? Oh, you can tell us anything, uh, right? <laughs> craziest stuff back, back behind the scenes Crazy backstage. I can't, about the cat I can't remember. You don't have to name names. I remember this really pretty girl walked in the club and I tried to pick up on her. And then I caught Nikki Six having sex with her in the bathroom. Uh, That's not that crazy. That's kind of sad. Well, it's just... <laughs> That was Nikki Three. Uh, that's Netflix stuff. Yeah, that's. <laughs> like, like, that was, I, don't, I don't know. That's pretty crazy story on the on the Cat House Hollywood podcast. Which story? Uh, well, the one with uh David Bowie. Oh my God! Oh, oh, let's hear the Bowie. Oh story. my gosh, you're right. Why would I forget that one? When Axel chased David Bowie down the street, saying he was going to kill him. What? Oh, I'm going to kill you, I'm gonna kill you Tin Man. Oh my God! Yeah. That 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 happened at the Cat House. It, what started that fight? Listen to the Cat House Hollywood podcast. Okay, I will. What about the Lita Ford story? Which story? Lita, Lita Ford. Ford. Oh, Lita Ford. She was like, when the Cat House first started, it was in the early days and Lita Ford came in and I said, look, whatever we do, keep Lita in here. Keep on getting her free drinks. Keep on giving her free drinks. And she used to party back in the day. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, Lita Ford's puking in the cat house. Oh. And so the night wasn't so great. So right. everybody's like, hey, sorry. Get her out of your here. Club, your club, you know, it didn't work out like you did. I'm like, dude. Lita Ford just puked in my car. <laughs> they're like, yeah, I know there are people who weren't here. I'm like, no, no, no. Lita Ford puked in my car. And so I thought like, I made it. Yeah, yeah. man. Like front paper of all the news, or front of all the news, man. If TMZ was around then, do you know? Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> the problem that happened with the cat house is all of a sudden cat house became, I remember there was a magazine called Beverly Hills 213. And they talked about all the hip stuff in LA. It would have been like, it would be like a Kardashian type right. magazine. And one day I'm looking at it and it says out, like what's out and what's in it says out vertigo in cat house and i said i'm done that's it no i said i'm done oh really because because now yeah. we're hip yeah. now we've got lines down the block mm -hmm. and there's people that are going to dress up in their men i mean women's wear daily california apparel news they all did stories about the cat house fashion we're in louis and vuitton matt oh no no even <laughs> even, even start a swimwear company called cat house really yeah ripping off your brand no i started a swimwear company called cat house <laughs> okay and what happened i started i started a swimwear company called cat house came out with swimwear it was um, only to be worn uh, in was, the club. No, there was this. It was swim. It was legit swimmer. Okay, I got on all the fashion magazines, all right. and it was. Uh, I, I I helped create a cotton stretch Leica that was denim, that was plaid, and it was gingham, and made them bathing suits out of them, and they were cool bathing suits, right? Yeah. And then I, then I went to this big chain called Everything But Water. This is really a boring story. Yeah. I walked in there one time and I said, 
oh, could I see the cat house swimmer? And they go, all we have is the tops. We never got the bottoms. And so I wrote to the distributor and I said, this is stupid. Why don't you have the stuff? And then they sent me a thing that says, I'm not allowed to contact any of my retailers. So I spent all the money I, on the swimmer company to take the brand back and close the company. Wow. So I never made a penny on it because oh. I just wanted to- all um, the tops and the bottoms. Huh? That's fucking awesome. <laughs> you know, but, it, but I was trying to be, I was trying to be like, it wasn't strip, it wasn't stripper wear. I was trying to be like a legit designer. Yeah. Right? Like, hey, this would be cool. I'd be a legit designer. So you, you see, you've got the entrepreneurial thing going on. What were the other ventures that you took on with Cat House? Well, I also had a club called Bordello. I did a Cat House tour. Um, oh, yeah. What was the Cat House tour all about? We just, we just took a bus and took out. Um, like the bands? That were, well, we did. We did we did one time we just did it with just like bang tango, but then we did one with partners in grime, which was me, Steven Piercy from rat, Tracy guns from LA guns, Fred Corey from Cinderella, Tammy from faster pussycat. And I don't remember who else. And we just put this all-star, this kind of, this is in the cat house podcast too. We put this all-star band together and we were in a tour bus and you got to understand all these bands are the biggest bands on headbangers ball right. with the host of headbangers ball. So the band Trickster was doing an in-store at a record store, right? So we took our tour bus and we pulled in front of their, their record store and all of us walked out and everybody left their in-store and all came to us. And it was kind of mean, like yeah, we got they're, cursed they're, out. They were little kids. Yeah, they were little kids because nobody cared about them because all the biggest rock stars right. just showed up in the parking lot. And the guys at Trickster was like, it's so cool for you to show up at our in-store. You know? <laughs> but, you know, uh, so, I just yeah. had PJ Farley on the show, actually, and he's playing with Fozzie now, doing a gig called Quarantine. Q or KUA and that they're doing all obscure kiss covers. Oh. It's actually kind of cool. They're doing, you know, bizarre stuff off unmasked and you know, oh it's appropriate. I didn't think mm -hmm. about that. He laughs at the trickster thing now too. So he knows that they were all just the young punk kids, you know. But they so, were nice. Yeah. I mean they weren't trying like if, if trickster would have all of a sudden came out and like now we're hardcore guys, I'm like shit. Yeah, right. It's, you know, it's a trickster striper yeah. tour. Like I used to get hard this is so funny, you know, talking about headbangers ball. I used to get such a hard time for wearing flannel and they would say oh. oh ricky's grunge now he's wearing flannel i'm like no i'm a biker and i get cold and I'm, i mean i'm still wearing flannel <laughs> shirts you know so people used to give me a hard time for that yeah well what are we wearing flannel now because i ride motorcycles and it's a nice long sleeve shirt so it was i remember you getting grief like shit and growing your face out too all the time and, but the funny thing was that adam was so pretty I mean, that was the whole thing like they were trying to get somebody that was grittier and rock mm. you know and, and so but i look back at the shows there were shows where i had short blue hair short yeah. short blonde hair short red hair because i just goofed around and did stupid shit that wasn't very metal yeah and well, maybe some of them was a bad decision but it's what i did you know right now nobody has long hair and right? i grew my hair long again it's a, and i hate it i hate having long hair just because it's a pain in the ass i hate having long hair it she gets does, tangled it blows back in her face when you're riding the bike and the uh <laughs> Any uh, any other uh, any other questions? That, I don't want to cut it. Um. All right. So, uh, what was the craziest thing you saw while hosting MTV? Mm. I don't remember. Besides Kurt Cobain okay. stories, <laughs> that you can tell us. Yeah, <laughs> I'd rather just say I'd rather say, I mean, the Allison Chain stories are always great. Yeah, and those. You know, we talked about the podcast too. It, but a lot of stuff I don't remember. With what? With who? Yeah, what was the deal with you and Dave Mustaine? Nothing. We just feel it was the last time I saw Dave Mustaine was like two years ago. And he said, you know what, Ricky? He goes, we're the Abbott and Costello of rock and roll. <laughs> and I'm like, right on. Because you know what? The funny thing is, Dave Mustaine used to give me a hard time on TV all the time. Why? Because he did. Yeah, but okay. And because I took it. Yeah. And the truth is, did you throw it back at him? I would have, what? Did you throw it back at him? Um, that wasn't my job. Yeah, all right. So the truth is, everybody's like, Dave Mustaine hated you. Dave Mustaine gave you a hard time. How many people ask me about the Metallica interviews? Right. They don't. Everybody asks about the Dave Mustaine. So my job is like, if he gives me a hard time and I keep on getting a hard time and people find it entertaining, sure. dude, go give me a hard time. Yeah, I don't care. Right. The truth people didn't know is I was skydiving with Dave. Hey, Dave was hey, ended up being wow. a friend. So if it was, if, if he gave me a hard time and I was the butt end of a joke, 
I don't care because yeah. people remember those shows. They don't talk about any of those shows. Dave Mustaine is what people talk about more than anything. Interesting. And it's because he gave me a hard time. I'm like, dude, I well, want to do ready. a TV show. Yeah. I want a TV show that when Dave Mustaine's on, everybody's like, oh, he's going to give Ricky a hard right. time. Yeah. He's going to give Ricky a hard time. And he did. Yeah. And it was good because people remember that show. God. Yeah. And you said you talked to him a couple of years ago. Uh-huh. And he had a cancer scare recently, yeah. right? So he's doing all right, though? Yeah. Yeah. Look, make it a story. That's cool. I, uh, did you ever do Scorps? Did you ever have Scorps on Headbangers? Yeah, I had Scorpions one time and I interviewed them in LA and it was like 102 and they all showed up in all black leather oh. pants and everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, what was that demeanor? What was what was the, the vibe like with them? I mean, Klaus- it's exactly what you think the Scorpions would be like. They were just Scorpions. Yeah. Know? They're just uh, German. <laughs> the class always seems so lighthearted, though. I, I figured it was all right. Yeah. All right. I don't remember that much. And, and nothing, nothing memorable about the score. No. All right. The, um, the, you know what? There was a really, I, I think about it, a lot of the bands that were blowing up at that time. It was really male centric, obviously. I mean, you mentioned Lita. There were very few bands that kind of had like some kind of attention on Headbangers. Femme Fatale was there, Vixen. But you know what's funny? Yeah. And we were talking about this earlier, and this is something that you can relate to now that you play in Flock of Seagulls, is um, something you can relate to. Back in the day, it was mostly females. If you think some of the biggest, the biggest new wave bands yeah you had you know not only had susan the banshees but you had berlin you had right. the b-52s you had you know uh rock set or, yeah, or yeah, whatever yeah like all these bands you know um were, were bands that had girls right yeah like girls were dumb bow wow wow yeah girls were the, the in new wave the girl bands were were pretty much dominant then absolutely yeah no that's true it's cool to see that there was a you know at least a representation there right so did you feel like it was too much sausage when you had headbangers there and most of the guests were, I guess, cause you had Vixen in, right. I remember yeah. Janet Gardner being on the show a few times and the, uh, but it seemed like a lot of those guys really had to toughen up too. Right. I mean, they went all black leather and everything like that to yeah, nobody bought. It. I mean, there were also bands like L seven and the cycle sluts from hell right, and yeah. bands like that. that were like girls that could kick legit. your ass. Yeah. You yeah. Know? Legit. So yeah. You still stay in touch with a lot of the bands that you know, no, I, I still keep in touch with, um well Tammy, I talked yeah. to Tammy uh five times a week. Wow. I still occasionally talk to guys in Guns N' Roses. The craziest thing is today, while we're here at the Happy Rock Inn, while I'm in the room, the phone rings Ow! and I go, um, and I, I'm like, hello. And he's like, Hey Ricky, Sean Kenny from Allison Chains. Mm-hmm. And I just go like this. I go, he's like, no, Ricky, it's Sean Kenny. And I haven't talked to him for like 20 years or oh, something. Wow. He's like, oh, I saw you were in Seattle and we were trying to ride. And I was like, that was kind of cool. Like, yeah. Because I really thought it was, I thought it was, people call me and say everything. Right. Oh, Ricky, the world. So he's like, Sean Kenny from Allison Kids. I'm sitting there like, and he's like, no, Ricky, it's really Sean Kenny. And I was like, oh. He's reaching out with good vibes too. He's like, huh? He wasn't saying, hey, I heard you're in Portland. Be careful. It's really scary there. No, he's in Seattle. He's like, we need to ride. <laughs> we, but, need, um, we need to ride. But like, yeah, I keep in touch with uh, some people. Well, it's good that like you have. Gilby Clark. Yeah. All the time. Yeah, you guys. You Fred know. Corey. He's a good, good person. And not, um, yeah, he's done well I'm, outside I'm, of rock and roll. Yeah, right? I'm Fre- Fred. Yeah, Fred. Oh, yeah, he's doing soundtracks. Dude. But I think a lot of my friends now are in like the newer bands. Like Mark Morton from Lamb of God is, is truly one of my best friends. I right. love Mark Morton. And um, I mean, Sebastian Bach's been really nice posting stuff about Ricky's ride. Interesting. D. Snyder. D. Snyder. I love D. Snyder. So good. Right? Yeah. D. Snyder's a good guy. Danko yeah. Jones. Yeah, Danko Jones. A lot of yeah. people. That's awesome. We used to cover some Danko stuff back in the band with Joff over here. Oh, you did? Yeah. Yeah, totally, man. We love those guys. Yeah, Danko is a, is, is a guy that should have made it big in America. That's true. Didn't. Yeah, Canada. Then he still got some some cred. But uh, yeah, great, great, amazing artist. But all the, all the cool cats in L.A. love Danko yeah. Jones. Everybody loves People Danko. People that know. Yeah. yeah. You, you want uh, one more to, to wrap it up? Um, oh, just gonna make one up. There's nobody there. There's nobody there. Nobody's, yeah. there. Just make nobody's lasted this long. As soon as we start talking about our love, everybody's like, <laughs> <laughs> Is there any pizza left? All right, it, okay. Have, 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 a, have a one more, and I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna talk about Dr. Drew. So, how about why this? not? Talk about was, what? A Dr. Drew story? I love like Dr. Drew. I love like Dr. Drew. I, I, I had a question. Is are you Dr. drunk? No. How drunk are you drunk? <laughs> a little bit. You're not a bit drunk. <laughs> but 
<laughs> You're a lot of he's, drunk. He's, he's working for free <laughs> and drinks. Hey, we're at the Happy Rock Inn. That's all right. Yeah, that's, he's not going anywhere. He's staying. <laughs> right, that's okay. I just like to hear. I just like to hear you ask questions now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. As, as slow as it needs to be. So, so, is Dr. Drew as big a know-it-all as he seems? I think he like, is. I ask Dr. Drew for advice all the time. Do you? I ask Dr. Drew for all advice, like what med should I stop taking? Um, what med should I start taking? You know, why does it burn when I pee? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Hopefully, you're not still asking, Dr. That. Drew. No, no, yeah. no, no, no. Only when he's. How about COVID questions? Do you ask him for COVID questions? I did it first. Yeah. But he he got pretty. Oh, you've got access. Yeah, Doctor Drew. Yeah, yeah. yeah my mom. The COVID listen, thing. Um, Holy shit! I uh, check no, this out. Yeah, my saying. mom was taking some meds, and she's like, "I don't know if I should take this stuff or not. I'm having anxiety." And so I asked Doctor Drew. Oh yes, you should. Hey, <laughs> hey Drew, it's Ricky. Blah, 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 blah. And he's like, "Well, tell your mom this and this and this and this and this." That's so it's kind of it's kind of rad. That's you know? the greatest hookup you ever need, man. Yeah, he's, he's a like, good. I, he's a really good person. I like Doctor Drew a lot. Well, let's put him on speaker phone. Yeah, we him him California. let's get him a speakerphone and ask him about the masks. And then we'll, <laughs> do we need but I don't know if I believe anybody's stories. You know Look, what? You're, I don't know what anybody. I don't know. You're right. Here's the truth. Yeah. Here's the truth. And we can end it on this. Here's yeah. the truth of the mask. Okay. Right. Do I like wearing masks when I go into gas station bathrooms? Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but does it does it bug me sometimes wearing masks? Yes. Sure. Now, if I'm wearing masks all the time, which I do, if I'm wearing masks all the time and we find out that this whole thing was just a big hoax, do you know what I get to say is I wore a mask for no reason. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. I wore a mask for no reason. Yeah. Now, what if it's the opposite? What if masks really do help? Yeah. If you don't wear a mask and you get <laughs> sick, it's not like, oh, I didn't wear a mask. No, it's going to get sick. Well, Absolutely. I'm going to tell you something. Let's hear it. The mask really helps. Oh, she works in it. She's worn a mask when she's a tattoo. Well, I'm, I'm trained and certified, uh, you know, with cross-contamination. And I've been for a long time. And we've been using masks in the tattoo industry for years and years and years because they work. Yeah. They work. They they, they keep your germs to yourself. Inside, to yourself yeah. You know. And now we have to follow like a little bit more because of COVID at the tattoo shop. Like our clients have to wear it as well. You know. But uh, before we used to wear them, and and you know now we do. Um, I mean. This all COVID stuff, it's, it's, it's horrible, you know, that we have a pandemic right now. Uh, <clears throat> in one way, I'm kind of, I'm glad that people are becoming to be aware of the way uh, airborne uh, sure. viruses transmit, you know, mm -hmm. and what we can do to uh, uh, spread them less. Sure. <clears throat> And I'm glad that people are becoming aware of that, you know, and it's all, it's really simple. It's like social distance, keep your germs to yourself, you know, wash your hands, don't touch your, your face. Pretty simple. Absolutely. Yeah, but Pretty randomly, simple. like Leo say like, Ricky, I think it's good to social distance, stay six feet away. Yeah. And then she like, she'll do it for like a couple of days, like, hey, Ricky, let's still, let's still play social distance, stay six feet away from you. <laughs> that's, a, that's the role playing you that's guys do. Thing. Yeah, that's you it. Know, it, this is all part of the covering our bases because if somebody's out there and they've got all the money in the world, they're trying to fund the Ricky and Leah reality TV show, right? Because before we started this, you were what? saying, yeah, when, when we said, if there's anything you could do, if money was no issue, you said, I want to do exactly what we're doing all the time. That's all I want to do is yeah. a TV show showing everybody the national parks, sure. showing everybody the small towns. Yeah. You know, I think yes. art, I want to experience everything in America, the good, the bad, the delicious, the freaky, the everything. Yeah, yeah. Unscripted. That's I what love I want it. to do. I love it, man. I think uh, anybody that hasn't checked it out already, if you go to rickysride.com and uh, Ricky's Ride 20 as well. This, the, the, yeah, both domains, just Ricky's Ride. All right, R-I-K-I's. Just follow yeah. Ricky Rackman or Leah Vendetta on social media. And okay. We just and do all kinds of cookie stuff. You, yeah. you, you got the links to the GoFundMe campaign so the, you, you can cover Ryan's uh, Alzheimer's Fund. And, yeah. uh, and you can also check out Leah Vendetta's tattoo business so that when COVID stops being an issue. Oh, well, we can, I mean, you can come and get tattooed now. Okay. Yeah. Right. If we follow all the, you know, uh, safety guidelines. Okay. In LA? Guideline. No, North, no, Carolina. North, Carolina. North Carolina. I didn't know if you wanted me to give away your location. You want to just touch on that? You moved from LA to get away from the Census Strip to go to North Carolina to almost start like a whole new life together. This is pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and you found that people there look so much different, right? 
so much different. different no no people there are so much different a little bit uh, nicer yeah well i mean the southern uh hospitality uh, <coughs> exists Sure. Right. Yeah. We just don't talk politics with our neighbors. Humidity is tough there. <laughs> it's all right. Yeah. You get well. You're used to humidity wherever you ride. But I, uh, I just, man, I love that you were able to get you this evening here at the Happy Rock. I think it's amazing. To- I just wanted to jump in yeah. and say thank you to all the donors. You bet. Yes. yes. Donated to Ricky's ride. Yes. Tonight we've raised uh, uh, in the last day or so we've raised a little over five hundred bucks. Wow! For Alzheimer's. I want to thank the happy all those people, yes. and thank you, Kevin, and thank uh, thank uh, Joff and Five Star Guitars, yeah. and most of all, thank thank Ricky and Leah for well, being good enough being to stop here and doing what they're doing down here. So I mean it. Thank, thank you, you guys. Cheers. Hey, thank you everyone. Subscribe to the All Access Live podcast. You can also find. We've got a couple of podcasts. We're going to pick. Cat House Hollywood podcast, the greatest rock and roll stories you've ever heard, ever. And the Triple R podcast, which has myself and Leah Vendetta and all sorts of uh, crazy guests and stories and fun stuff. And we had some good guests on. We had some good guests on that show. Yeah, nobody, yeah. nobody's cool as Ricky and Leah though. Yeah. I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thank you guys so much. And thank you. This thank you, fun. everybody, too, man. Thanks so much, everybody. Have a beautiful week. And uh, tomorrow night, tomorrow afternoon, we'll see Todd Zuckerman from Sticks. Right on. Woo! Yeah. Yeah.